DaVinci Resolve doesn't make it easy to do word by word animation, but hopefully we're going to fix that in this video because this is something that I've been searching for for years now and it all came a little bit clearer in a video that was posted a little while back on Peej ENT's alt account, Peej ALT. If you don't know this guy, he is super, super smart DaVinci Resolve YouTuber, makes some killer videos and tutorials. You guys should go check him out. He'll be down below in the description. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial. We're going to show you his way as well as another way that you guys can do this because it doesn't fix all the issues. So let's jump in. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do, like most of my videos, is we're going to grab a fusion composition. Then we're going to jump into the fusion page. Now, when I like work in fusion, I like to set my comp size. So I do that by grabbing a background. It's pretty much how I start off every composition. Um, so grab your background, connect it, and now we will go grab our text plus node, which we are going to be creating the animation on. Connect that to your background, and let's just type something out. Da Vinci doesn't make it easy to do word by word animation. All right. Yours does not need to be as long as that, but that's what we got here. And now we're going to right click on this box and select the follower modifier. So now once we go to modifiers, we are actually going to select a setting that you've probably never selected before. We're going to pop up to order and we're going to select the manual curve. So this is what's going to actually allow us to do the word by word animation in DaVinci Resolve. But like I said in the beginning, it has its drawbacks. So stick around to see method two, because that's going to make it so that way we can do some more stuff. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set a keyframe on this delay by character position, and we're going to select our first word. Now, we're going to change this delay value based off what keyframe we want our words to come in. So assuming you want your first word to come in in the first keyframe, which is the zeroth uh, frame, you're gonna now select set first selected character delay. Now we're gonna move on to the second word. And let's say we wanted to make this come in on the 10th frame. We'd write down 10, hit enter, and once again, hit set first selected character delay. And now just go through all your words, changing it up by 10 frames or however many frames you want. If you want to go five frames later, you would do five and then 10. All right, so this next one's going to be 30. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, we'll break it down a little bit more in a second. Do 40. All right, now once we have this on the follower modifier, we need to actually jump into our spline tab. So open up the spline and make sure your text is selected, specifically delay by character position. And then I'm going to hit zoom to fit. Now we're going to come down here and there's a couple ways of doing this. You can either hit control A on your keyboard to select all or click this. And then we're going to look for the step in and we're going to select that. Now, this is what's going to actually create the word by word animation in DaVinci. So now we can go ahead, jump over to the modifiers tab and we can come to um, what we want to actually modify. So I want to break this down for a second before we jump into that. This first part is going to be what sets the delay between the animation the next part that we're going to be doing is for this video, we're going to do a opacity word by word animation, but you guys can do anything that you want on any of these different pages. 
So for this one, we're going to do the opacity. So if we just keyframe frame zero, and then we come to frame 10 and go back to the first frame, set the opacity to zero. Now what's gonna happen is the words are going to display on the screen from nothing to something. And every 10 frames, a new word is gonna start to animate. That's what happens with this delay here. This is what I'm really trying to explain because this didn't click in my head at first. This delay, since we set 10, on the 10th frame, the second word comes in or whatever you selected. And then hypothetically, on frame 30, which it doesn't appear to be doing on on frame 20, I guess, and then a little bit beforehand. It's, it's a little bit buggy, but whatever. It's, it's close enough. Um, so hypothetically, it's supposed to come on on every 10 frames going forward. So that's how you do this simple animation for this, but what if you wanted to create a size animation word by word? Well, we can come in here to the text and go into our modifiers and then we can jump in and into one of these tabs and we could do it here, right? Let's say we wanted like a bounce animation. So maybe come to frame three, we'd overshoot our text and then we come two frames forward or something like that and reset our text. Now, of course, I want to come in here and smooth things out. So let's go ahead, smooth out the opacity, which we didn't smooth out before, smooth out the size. And now let's check out what happens. It bounces, but the word animation is doing something weird. It's moving all over the place. That's probably not exactly what you wanted, though this effect is kind of cool. I won't lie, but it's probably not what you intended to have happen. So if you wanted to create an animation like this, we can't do it using this method, unfortunately. If we wanted to do an animation like this, it is easy, but it's a little bit more tedious and a lot harder than it has to be. But let's go ahead and jump into that and break that down. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and break down that second method, which is a little bit more tedious. So we're actually going to limit the amount of words that we have in here. I just eliminated some and it's just word by word animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into our text node and I just went ahead, right clicked and removed the follower modifier that we had on there. So just right clicked, remove follower. And now we're going to make a bunch of duplicates of our text. So I'm going to come in here and just control C, control V um, four times because we have four different words. One, two, three, four. All right. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to come into each individual word and we're going to create a rectangle mask for each word. So come to the first word and we're just going to separate out the word word. And then we're going to go into the second one and just create a mask for all these. So I'm actually just gonna create a mask for each of them by copy and pasting. And then we're going to connect the second one here and just do the word by onto the third, which is word again. So this one should be super easy. And onto the last one, which is animation. So you can just separate these out. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. It can be an extremely rough mask like you saw there for animation. It's 
completely going all over the place. Um, so now once we have our words, let's say we wanted to bring in something like a size animation on these. So what we have to actually do is we need to bring in a transform node. So there's going to be a transform node for each of these. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the animation. So let's go ahead and create that same size animation that we created in the follower, except a little bit better. So frame zero will set to size zero. Um, frame three, we're going to set another keyframe and frame five. So on frame three, we want it to overshoot. So anything above one. And then this one, we want to be back to one. Now you can see in here that it's a little bit finicky because when we play out this animation that we now have, yes, it does our bounce, but there's some other things going on here that we don't want. So first thing that we got to do is actually come back to this first keyframe, or we can actually do it on the last one since it's set to size one, any frame that's set to size one, otherwise you'll have to switch it back for a second. Um, then we're going to take the pivot point and we're going to bring it to roughly the center of the word that we're working with. All right, now you should see that other than the fact that we haven't smoothed out the spline, so if you come into the spline, zoom to fit, control A, S, now this should look nice. So we got that word by word animation that we're looking for. We just haven't added it on to all the other words. So let's go ahead, grab our transform node, and we're just going to hit control C, control V, paste it below each one of our nodes. So got that in here. Now what we need to do is it's all gonna come up right off the bat. We need to also adjust our pivot points for all these. So just go into them real quick, adjust the pivot points. And then after we get the pivot points done, we will move on to the last part. All right. So got the pivot points all set up. This should be pretty good. I like that animation. Nice. And all right, now it's just going to come down to moving the keyframes. So let's come to the first transform um, and jump into the keyframes tab, hit the little drop down and zoom to fit. And we're just going to select all these keyframes, um, move to whatever frame you want the animation to start. Let's say even 15. And then we're going to click on this first guy, drag him over till 15. That first keyframe lines up with 15. And we're going to do the same thing with all these guys. So come to the next one, frame 30, and we'll just move by 15 frames for each one. So select these, drag them, and now you can check out what we got. Boom. Obviously, if you guys want these to come on a bit sooner, you can move them closer to each other, um, but... 15 is good for now. Now, last thing I say to add to this is, as always, is motion blur. Let's get this looking nice. Um, I'm going to improve the quality and drop down the shutter angle here uh, to 15 for the quality and around 80 for the shutter angle just for all these. All right, now let's check out what we got. Woo! After recording this video, I actually realized that there is a third method for getting word by word subtitles thanks to DaVinci Resolve 20. 
So this is going to be for those of you that have already downloaded the 20 beta, maybe DaVinci Resolve 20 is out by now. And this is actually going to be the only paid way in this video. All the rest you can do completely for free. And it's actually good that I figured this out now because I have some footage to actually show you this effect. All right, so this one's actually gonna be the simplest out of all of them, but it is going to require you to have some things from the start. So what we're gonna need to do is pop up here to the timeline and head over to the AI tools, and we're going to click on Create Subtitles from Audio. Now, you guys can extend these out as much as you want, so obviously use a smaller amount of characters if you only want less words, but let's go ahead and just show you with more words on here. So DaVinci will just kind of jump in here and do its thing. We'll just give it a minute to generate and spit out some subtitles. All right, boom. DaVinci spit out some subtitles for us and we can come in anywhere in the video. Um, we can just pick out a spot. So let's say make some killer videos and tutorials. So if we jump up here to the effects now that we got our subtitles up, um, we can actually jump into the title sections that we have and DaVinci Resolve 20 has a brand new section for subtitles. So you're going to get the standard um, text down here for all these guys. And then you'll have some animated options that DaVinci has actually included in DaVinci Resolve 20. So I like this statement one. Let's go ahead and select this one. If you want to apply it to your clip, you would just apply it to the subtitles and just drop it on here. And now it should take a second, but it will, it should populate with whatever effect we have. And now we should have some animated subtitles on here. Now, obviously you'll have to come in here and adjust the timing. I actually don't have my audio on right now, so I can't really hear what's going on. But let's say that it was off. I could just drag this over and make it put it in a better position so that way it's actually going word by word in a lot of these different sections. Boom. So that's super easy. The only drawback is that you can only do this for one kind of subtitle. So I can't just make another subtitle track and uh, do this again with a different kind of subtitle and delete some of the other ones. Um, it's only going to allow you to use one animation at a time. So the other cool thing about this effect is you can actually use your own effects. And that's what I was kind of talking about in the beginning. If you have um, your own subtitle animations like we have here, if I drop down here, this is from a pack. We can pop over to just one of these down here you can actually drag on your own subtitle animations as well, and they will pop up. Check this out. Boom. Now, that wasn't perfect because obviously that um, this pack takes a little while for the animations to happen. So maybe if we do, let's just find one. This one might work. So let's go ahead and check this out. And we'll do it on a longer section. Yeah, so obviously it doesn't work perfect with what we got going on here. But um, overall, you should be able to create some sort of subtitles. And as long as the animation is quick enough, you can have it pop in and out like you normally would or whatever kind of animation you would have.